Should I buy a car or should I save for a, a house? Is what we're talking about today at the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, joined by a resident expert in mortgage lending, Laura Solano. Good morning. Oh, what a pleasure it is. <laughs> now, um, we're getting down to the end of this series we just shot, and what a great subject to talk about. Buying cars or save for a house. Now, but first of all, is this advice? No, never. <laughs> okay. Disclaimer at the end, check it out. All right, yep. that's at the end of this video. <laughs> yep. We're going to shoot that as well. Yep. Yep. But anyway, on with the job. Now, let's talk about... Like, back in the day, I left university, got a good job, bought a car. Great. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think that cars are amazing things to get you from A to B. Sure, sure, That's sure. That's what I think. But then, you know, I know in my life, there's certain people and personalities and good friends I've got. Um, he bought, uh, a good friend of mine, bought a house in Townsville, an apartment, in fact, yeah. in Townsville. Um, at 18. Yeah. Now, you probably like the idea of that lawn, I imagine. Um, Laura, yes, I do like the idea of that. <laughs> He's tired. Needs another coffee. Um, we, I, I like property myself. I see cars as something that gets me from A to B. I know mm. that everybody's different, that some people will love to have like an amazing car mm. and that's often the repayments that come with those cars mm. are substantial. Mm -hmm. And I just think when I'm looking at people um, who want to buy a property, um, and you know their car loan repayment is five hundred or six hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. um, that eats into their capacity to borrow. Sure so, does. So it's it's a car loans are one of the biggest things that actually eat into capacity, and the reason is because they're a loan that's taken over a really short period of time, mm -hmm. and so it should be because the car's value or life value might be five, ten years. So the loan should really only be taken over that period of time. Um, but what it means is that you're directing your funds to that purpose instead of towards a house. Mm, that's mm. all. No, I guess so. Well, that's it. And, you know, if it, whether you read Noel Whitaker back in the day or whether you're reading Barefoot and Fester now, like uh, there's seldom that those sorts of people are advising to plough money into luxury items or... Yeah. doodads in the language of Robert Kiyosaki even, yeah, so. There's lots of different ways to get around, mm. you know, they're true. I know. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, okay, if, if you're a fan of Uber, which most people are, that's yeah. a great way to be chauffeur driven everywhere. Yeah, um, And without heard, having the overhead. Well, yeah. that's right, I've heard lots of people say that, you know, do the numbers, Uber actually works out a lot cheaper than owning a car. It, I guess it can do. It, I guess it depends on how much you travel and how flexible you actually need to be. Mm. If you're working, um, if you're working in an office base, mm. and your your travel is you know pretty consistent each day, then you know perhaps the six hundred dollars a month might be more. Um, it, it, might, it, it might. It might. Um, progress your goals more quickly mm. if it's put towards a deposit on a house. Yeah, you know, sure. because it's actually, it, it's um, getting a house housing loan is quite a rigorous process and so we need to disclose all of the commitments that you have, including car loans, mm. and they do have a massive impact on servicing. Sure, sure, sure. Mm. So in terms of like uh, saving for that mortgage or the, and that house and your, your future as well, we talked about that in terms of like buying your first home last in the last series of videos and that sort of thing. I mean, what, have you got some sort of general tips at all about like, you know, so we haven't bought the car. Yep. Are we just diverting all that funds and just saving it? Save, save, save. Is it as simple as that or is there other ways that you can help uh, promote that process? Yeah, I think that there, I think that I believe that um, account structure helps give, um, helps give discipline mm -hmm. in the things that you want to achieve. Mm. So if you know that you want to buy a house, and you know that your rental commitment is say $500 a week mm. and you know that the house that you want to buy, the, the commitment on that mortgage might be $600 a week, mm. then are you saving the additional $100 into a separate account that you don't touch? Oh, okay. So simple sort of the, the well, that goes back to the barefoot investor again, yeah, yeah with these bucket type Little approach. Envelopes. Like you put it away somewhere, different bank even, those sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. So was, you do need to have a certain mindset around that. And it seems to me that, to the, for the most part, and the majority of the population, don't really get the idea of uh, idea of saving for the long term. Yeah, it really does take a bit of a kick in the pants to I think get it, your head around it. Yeah, I think particularly with um, with things like technology that is so easily everything's instant. Hmm. You know, and and. Um, the millennials maybe, hmm. or maybe 
everybody has a has an element of this where emails are instant um, text messaging is instant everything has the capability of having an instant response mm. and so I don't know whether we have lost the um, ability to delay gratitude uh, grat um, mm. that word <laughs> Gratification. Yeah. Delayed gratification, thank you. I don't know whether we've lost the ability to apply delayed gratification to mm. our life as much. Mm. Um, and I think that there is value in having delayed gratification for something. Oh, sure. No, well, that's it. No, well, that's even part of my lifestyle that I live now. There's a bigger goal that I've got in mind. It's actually not the house, <laughs> but, but no, the, look, the houses are sorted, the investment structure's good, so I'm get, now going for goals in terms of the bigger goals and, yeah. and the lifestyle goals of my life, yeah. on the platform of, of having built financial a security. Action. Yeah. Oh, like it's, and what I a guess, revelation. <laughs> it's a revelation. Um, that it's, for me, where I would like, where I would feel um, happy to have those lifestyle choices is knowing that my family is safe mm. already, knowing yeah, sure. that the foundation's there, knowing that my that my home is safe, knowing that I can afford my lifestyle. Sure, sure, sure. You know, so if I can't afford my lifestyle, then I'm I'm living that lifestyle at the expense of something else. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's going to go the wrong way at some point. Something's going to go wrong. It's just a, a risky way to do it. That's yeah, all. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. a big fan of uh, getting <laughs> self-organised self and make sure you do have your future planned out in some sort of manner, yeah? Yeah. And I you're think saving so. for that future. Yeah. No, I think that's the uh, that's the theme of today's episode. Yeah, done, pretty much done. Yeah, but anyway, look, those conversations and that uh, and that sort of advice around that sort of thing is something they should do with by talking to you. I'm sure we yeah. can. Yeah, we can help people get on a path to um, acquire their first home, mm. or also to make future decisions around their lending. Yeah, we so can what help hypothetical them type stuff. You yeah, know, like if you do this and take these steps, and we get to this point, then this is what it looks like. Wow! Wow! All right, that'd be fabulous. Now, how do people get hold of you, Laura? You can call me on mobile, 0422-320-497, or also email through to the office, home at podfinancial.com.au. Oh, fabulous. Okay, more great advice from Laura Solana. Actually, not advice, an opinion, I imagine. <laughs> um, anyway, that's uh, another episode done of the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor. <laughs>